Well, it's always a good time when you have five, and if I include myself, six women <laughs> calling the shots, it's always a good time to chat. So thank you so much for joining me. So novelist John Berger had said, men act, women appear, men watch, women watch themselves being watched. So it was male gaze that basically was the narrative. But now with you all ladies leading from the front, do you think things have changed? Yes, of course. I mean, they are going to change. They're already changing. So, Sunia, I'll start with you because I'll go back a long way with you and the Mira Association. And how have you, from Salam Bombay to Ye Ballet, <laughs> emotionally, mentally made that switch to the OTT platform? Um, it's a new world, it's a brave new world, and I'm delighted to enter it because I feel I was always marginal before. Um, with the kind of films I made, which is with no stars. And now I'm in a situation where I've made a film with no stars. I've got a very healthy budget to make it, thanks to Netflix. And so it's a sea change for me, and I feel reborn. <laughs> and Ruchi, Guilty just is about to premiere, and is it something very different from what you've done before? And also you had said that the male actors, the top stars, were a little wary of being cast, so tell us a bit about that. Um, well, it wasn't actually uh, that they were wary of being cast in this film. Uh, it was a different film that I had written, which was led by male protagonists. And when I was trying to cast for that film, uh, though everybody seemed to love the script, and of course, everyone wants to work with Dharma, we couldn't actually cast that film. And eventually, <laughs> Karan did tell me, he said, I have a feeling it's just because you're a woman, they have a problem. And I was so angry and upset with that, that I think I, that anger and upset fueled me into writing this film, Guilty, uh, which uh, though uh, it's basically about the injustice of inequality and um, the extreme manifestation of that, of course, in terms of gender, is sexual assault. So that's why the film is about that. And when you deal with a subject, then as a writer or a director, you want to explore all sides of it. Because uh, any kind of injustice, whether it's gender, whether it's class, caste, anything to do with privilege, um, it affects both sides. Yeah, true. It changes people's behavior on both sides. Um, so that's the kind of complexity and confusion that I wanted to get in, which makes it a more human story. Because everyone does have a point of view. True. Whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. uh, we may have our fears, but even the, you know, uh, men have fears and concerns. So I just w I thought it would be a richer conversation to explore both those angles. And Anvita, they call you the lady who weaves magic with her songs. So tell us about your own observations in comparison to when you began and now. Has, how has that changed, the narrative? So um, it's a little different for writers. Uh, we never get cast for a film because of our gender. Yeah. We get picked up because of our writing. Um, as we were talking earlier, Gulzar Saab has written some of the most feminine and delicate lyrics that we know. Very sensitive writers are there who are, who are male. So it's actually not your gender, it's what you bring to the story. Sure. Yeah. Yes, what can tend to happen is, uh, like for example, um, say I'm from Punjab or you're from Bombay, and there's something that you know of your world because you belong there. So sometimes you will, just like that, bring something to the story because you belong to the world of being a girl or a woman. That much, yes. But uh, in terms of difference, the only difference is that there are a lot more female lyricists now than when I came in. But one of the first few female composers ever in the film industry were women. Yeah. So it's not like it hasn't happened before. Yeah, true. Sometimes you also, it's almost like you, uh, when you hear of someone, who's a lyricist or a writer, and you know of their journey, it kind of gives you a permission, you know, that I can do this. So mm. that is what happens with writers. I do understand that it exists and there is, there is a 
huge mismatch in numbers as far as the gender is concerned, yeah. but that's not the narrative that I've had to deal with as a writer. And Shivani and Sarah, I mean, both of you have produced a film also for Netflix. So what do you think women want from women in cinema? And how does one bridge that gap between consumer and... Interesting. I'd say representation and just relatability. And that's one thing exciting right now about being a filmmaker in general, not just a producer, writers, directors, actors of the sort. What we have to see more on, and just picking up on what Anvita said, it's not just the female gaze, it's the feminine gaze that's actually coming up front. It's not gender specific anymore. You know, you've got great male directors as well who just bring out the best in their feminine and female characters. So um, definitely I'd say that, you know, in terms of representation, allowing to bring those kind of characters and stories to the screen, any screen, whether it's the silver screen or online, in terms of characters you can relate with and somewhere you don't have to keep hunting and seeing you know, am I anywhere to be seen in a larger platform? And that's what's so good about stories now. You can see yourself on the screen, and that really helps, whether you call it validation or anything, but it's definitely relatability. And that's extremely important these days. Yeah, I think it's sort of widening um, richness mm -hmm. of stories, different perspectives, because um, there have been kind of set stereotypes. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think what women get from other women is a certain sensitivity because we've sort of been used to a certain way of looking at characters yeah, actresses the way that those characters were written earlier i think that's sort of opening up um, and also the other thing i think that happens with women producers is that you want to work with more women yeah. creators um, and i think so, so just overall it kind of really opens up the space for everyone. Also, this is to all of you. Where do you feel India, Indian cinema, especially one created for women, for, comes under the Bechdel test? Interesting. <laughs> I think it must be pretty <laughs> abysmal. Yeah. <laughs> Quite, Quite kind of. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it depends on the story. For example, Ye Ballet is mostly a story with uh, boys and male characters. And it's a true story, so there's nothing that I can do about that. So I think it would fail the Bechtel test, but <laughs> <laughs> the few women I have, or the one character I have, uh, who I don't want to name because she's nameless in the film, would pass the Bechtel test. Yeah, she would. It's also not just about on camera, I'd say, behind the camera yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one thing we're very excited about. I mean, the, just the sheer talent behind the camera now. Everyone from running on the set to your technicians to people in post. So in that way, I think we're, we're getting there. But yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still really tiny. I mean, tiny. it gives Shivani and me a lot of joy when you have, uh, you know, an HOD walks into our office and says, wow, there are so many women yeah. HODs on yeah. this project. Yeah. You know, it just makes us yay <laughs> <laughs> in some way. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, yes, the numbers, uh, like I said, it, it's looking up lots more women and again, it's to do with exposure. You know, we come from that generation where we had the usual um, doctor, engineer. Mm. Then it became cooler and there were fashion designers. And things <laughs> like that. There's certain things that you look at. Even, even when I came to the industry, there was this thing of looking at, oh, uh, she's a stylist. So therefore, mm -hmm. it's a woman or hair and makeup mm -hmm. and things like that. But today, uh, women themselves, when we are not talking about we're not focusing on our gender yeah. because biology has nothing to do with intellect. I yeah. know. So nice. when you're focusing Absolutely. on what you want to do, so more and more girls are coming into the fray because of that. Yeah. I feel just that mindset mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll just keep changing because it's all about telling stories True. and relating and being just great human beings and hopefully that is what is going to change yeah. the numbers as well. I want to go back to your first yeah. question then about OTT. Yeah. And I think that's really made a huge difference sure. um, in providing that kind of platform, opportunity, volume, just, you know, because there's just that much more work that's happening uh, and the types of things that you can now say. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, you know, we're all very, very grateful. Yeah, places um, like Netflix give us an opportunity to tell so many different kinds of stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, again, creates that much yeah. kind of work that much kind of opportunity and therefore the numbers increase mm -hmm. both men and women. 
And feminism and femininity. So how does one make an intersection between the two so it becomes appealing for the masses? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a much longer I'm discussion. Yeah. 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 The ratio is. Heads <laughs> <laughs> proof. <laughs> you said how do you make it appealing for the masses? Masses, yeah. There's only so much we can do in terms of changing perception and how receptive someone is. I mean, I guess we're probably doing our best. Um, sometimes there isn't a line. Sometimes yeah. you can't tell there's a line because it's just who we are and the kind of people we work with and the stories we're telling. But it's also, I mean, the audience is evolving. I mean, the kind of stuff they're watching, the things they want, mm. um, absolutely. And they're not limited to going to theaters anymore. It's, we've got so many more screens now. If we go to the really old school approach, there's just millions of more screens now. So I that's mean, I, those many more audience members. I think because there's fewer restrictions in the types of stories that mm. lends to exactly this. You can kind of widen what is the notion of a woman, femininity. Yeah. Um, there's more room for grey, yeah. which earlier it wasn't. I mean, I think women's roles were very um, boxed in a yeah. certain way. Uh, I think so. So just the richness of stories and everything is is opening up, and and that gives you room to explore. So, like I, I yeah. also feel that um, one of the best things that's happening now with more women who are uh, you know in control of the storytelling uh, is that women are being projected not as only noble. One of my mm. biggest grouses as a woman mm. when I watched other films is, I mean, either they are like bad or they always have to be noble. They I always have to be yeah, exactly. yeah. selfless and, you know, everything is for someone else. But what about them? <laughs> what do they want? What is their ambition? What is their flaw? That's what makes a character real, whether it's a man or a woman, but somehow mm. The women were not allowed to have those flaws. Yeah. They always had to be doing everything in a noble mm. way. Yeah. So I feel the biggest liberation with women actually creating and portraying characters is that you will see them doing wrong things, which they really shouldn't be doing. And that was a mistake. And oh God, why did mm. you do that? Or how could she do that? That is what I want to see. Yeah. I mean, it comes from our personal experience exactly, then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So because that's opened up, you're like, okay, that's not the only thing that I have experienced in that's life. True. It is a little bit different. So let's show that, mm -hmm. you know, and that I think is what makes mm -hmm. it relatable. More women, more, just everyone then gets to see um, a more rounded kind of world experience. And also the word yeah. feminist, I just want to talk about that when you said feminist and feminine. Yeah, because they look feminist. at, yeah, they look at no, uh, you know, women feminism, yeah. you know, that's yeah. a feminist. Yeah. Feminist is something, it's I mean, actually, again, again, it's something that they think is when you get onto a soapbox and cry okay. yourself hoarse about something. It, it's, it's not that, it's like how someone is compassionate. You could be a feminist. Men can be feminist, Absolutely. you sure. know, yeah. so it has yeah. nothing to do with, uh, so I'm a woman, so I'm going to tell you this male bashing kind of a story. I'm just going to tell you a good story, Correct. regardless of my gender. That is it, what we are here to do. That is why we are all sitting at this table. Yes. It's because we just want to tell a good story, a spinner yarn, you know, call you close and say, what kya hua? That's all. Yeah. Last oh, uh, from what Ruchi said, uh, it's been a very traditional dichotomy. Either you're Madonna or you're a hawk. You know, yeah. and Hindi films have <laughs> perpetuated that. As Ruchi said, that has been shattered, mm. and that's a very good thing because, as a writer, as uh, you also said, uh, you want to look at the spectrum of human experience. You don't want to, to you know, be dealing with these two extremes that have actually been a kind of male, you know, Creation. extreme that has been thrust upon us. So that is very exciting to break that. Thank you so much, ladies. It's Thank you. To wrap up. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.